Howdy everyone, welcome to the Tank and Spank Quick Hit Guide to Ruby Life Pools for Mythic Plus. Our goal with these Quick Hit Guides is to teach you the things you need to know to be successful in Mythic Plus. We're going to quickly go through the most important kicks, stops, and possibilities to get you through the dungeon. The first area has a handful of Flash Frost Earth Shapers in them. These cast Tectonic Slam, which slaps big AoE damage and needs to be stopped or stunned. Your priority interrupt in the first area is Ice Shield from the Flash Frost Chill Weavers. That gives an ally a shield, which makes them immune to CC. The shield can be purged. Throughout the room, before the first boss, there are several eggs on the sides of your path. Don't run over these, or drag the mini-boss through them. You'll then fight your first of several mini-bosses, Defiler Draghar. Draghar will occasionally turn and target a random party member, and charge at them. Aim this at the wall, and not towards the whelps, or the boss. All players need to move out of the charge. He also does a frontal cone on the tank, so don't be in front of the boss if you aren't tanking. Then you get to the first boss, Melodrusa Chillworn. She casts Hail Bombs under every player, which erupt after a few seconds into Ice Shards. These persist throughout the fight and do a lot of damage if you run into them. The tank can clear some of these with a DR if they want. She also casts Chill Storm on a random player. Drop this on the edge of the room and then everyone get out. It does a bunch of damage. The boss also casts Awaken Whelps. She breaks open a pack of eggs around the room. The Whelps occasionally cast Cold Claw, which puts a stacking debuff on the tank. If it reaches 8 stacks, the tank is stunned for 3 years. AoE stun and silence the adds and nuke them down. The healer should dispel the stacks when they start to get high. Then burst through the boss's shield to interrupt her and stop her pulsing AoE. The trash before the second boss is in a circle around the platform. It doesn't matter which direction you go first. This area has two dragon mini-bosses. To the left, you fight Thunderhead. He does a tank hit and a frontal breath on a random target. The big thing here, though, is Rolling Thunder. He puts a debuff on two players that ticks for a ton of damage on that player, and explodes for a high party damage when it's dispelled or expires. Players that get the debuff should pop a defensive. Healers should immediately dispel one player, top up the group, spot heal the second player with the debuff, and be ready to top off the group again when the second debuff expires. On the other side of the circle is Flame Gullet. He also does a tank buster as well as a frontal breath. When he drops below 50% health, he starts doing Molten Blood casts. This does AoE damage that stacks with each cast until he's dead. You can also walk around the outside of the room and skip him. There are three other types of mobs to worry about as you circle around the platform. Primalist Cinder Weavers cast Cinderbolt at random party members. This is your priority interrupt. They also give themselves a haste buff, Burning Ambition, which can be spell stolen or purged. Primalist Flame Dancers cast Flame Dance, which does a ton of AoE damage. You need to stop or stun each of these casts. The big orange elementals, Blaze Bound Destroyers, put out a living bomb on players that do AoE damage around a player and knocks them up. This will also knock up the other mobs you're fighting. Put the debuff on the adds and everyone else should move out of it. Elementals also cast Inferno, which is just unavoidable AoE damage and explode in a big circle shortly after they die. After you kill all the destroyers, you'll get access to the second boss, Cokehead Blazehoof. The boss is all about area denial and making sure you leave yourself room to work. Pick a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, to move. The boss targets a ranged DPS or healer and drops an elemental on them. The elemental casts Roaring Blaze, which needs to be interrupted or else it nukes your group. When the elemental dies, it explodes and leaves a pool of fire on the ground that you need to drag the boss out of. The boss also periodically throws out a Molten Boulder at players that goes in a straight line and explodes if it hits a wall. If you get hit by the ball or the explosion, you die. So the idea is that range need to bait the elementals in front of the direction you're moving so you have room to kill them without getting killed by boulders. Heading to the next boss, most of the packs have channelers that do significant AoE damage, so be careful pulling too big. High Channeler Rivati, right before the last boss, channels uninterruptible AoE damage that needs to be healed through. Flame Channelers in this area cast Flash Fire, which is your priority interrupt among these mobs. You should clear the entire final platform to give yourself room to fight the last boss. Urquhart Stormvane and his dragon Karaka make up the last boss fight. Initially, Urquhart is unmounted. He casts Storm Slam, which hits like a truck and leaves a debuff that increases the damage of subsequent Storm Slashes. This needs to be dispelled after every single strike. He also casts Interrupting Cloud Burst, which does a big AoE nuke and silences you if you're casting when it goes off. Initially, Karaka just flies around and occasionally lands to breathe fire across the platform. After a while, however, Karaka lands and Urquhart hops on her back. He keeps casting his abilities, and Karaka adds Flame Spit, which debuffs players who take damage and then drop pools on fire after a while. Try to drop these on the outside of the platform. You also get the debuff if you run into someone else's circle or get hit by the breath. So the more you get hit, the more pools you'll have. 
The more damage you take and the harder the fight gets. Focus Karaka to reduce party-wide damage and then finish off a cart. <laughs>